And we're live! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another Vector 3D live stream. Today we're going through the VZ235 and as you can see we have a special guest with us. Simon, welcome to the Vector 3D live stream. Hey, what's up? How's it going man? Oh, I'm doing good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. It's a good morning, good afternoon for you. Yeah, it's a very warm afternoon, another one. We've had a run of three or four in the UK now, like exceptionally hot days. So it's nice to be indoors in the cool. Yeah, turn on the AC, keep the hydration. <laughs> uh, okay, so can everyone hear both of us okay? Hopefully you can. Let me know if either of us is too quiet. Ah, uh, I think they may be not be able to hear you. Um. Okay. I know, I know, I think, I think it's all right. We're good, we're good. All right, can you guys hear me? Yep, we heard him. Okay, good. I think that's good. I think but I'll bring this one down a bit and then we should be good. Okay, so before we get, so, okay. The plan for today is to basically run through all the parts that we've got here in the kit, which we had delivered this week. But before we do that, I want to give a bit of an introduction. Well, Simon, if you can give a bit of an introduction to VZBot, like what is it? What's it based on? Where's it come from? When did it start kind of thing? What are we actually looking at here? Because I don't think I've really covered VZBot at all on my channel before. Well, the VZBot was born um, in the pandemic when I was uh, bored and um, I was going through a little... Uh, depression, if that's the right English word. So I had that um, magnificent Tronxy X5S that uh, was running and I started modding it and modding it and it was not up to my um, my standards or I didn't do exactly what I, I always wanted it to be faster, better. So um, I completely ditched it, kept the frame and started building a, a printer with the frame and there we go. We had the first VZBot, which was a 330 by 330. And then it, the development kept going on that one. And it's been uh, an evolution since then. And then we also uh, designed a new printer out of that, the VZ235, which is smaller and uh, different frame. We have the open front and uh, collaboration with the entire VZBot team here. Sorry here, uh, especially uh, Guillaume. I don't know if he's going to be joining the feed or not, but um, we've made this printer smaller and with smaller means less moving mass so we could go faster. Then we introduce all wheel drive, more motors, more power, less resonance, better overall. We added uh, all kinds of, of parts to make it better. We wanted to get rid of all plastic parts to have rigidity, performance, and uh, a better hot end. We we built uh, and designed the Goliath hot end that goes with the kit. We also um, designed a VZ extruder. We water cool everything. And now we have, I think we have a, a, a very good package that is a very high performance printer. And uh, people were wondering if we, if we could buy a kit one day. So we've worked really hard with Mello to um, build a kit, including all the parts in one big box so people could build it easier without having to self-source all the parts, you know, from 10,000 places. And and it adds up to the cost because you have the shipping on, on all the stuff. So we have a good kit. You got a beta kit right there. So it's very exciting uh, to, see, to see that. You're probably one of the first uh, people to get that. We also got one. We're assembling it right now. We are um, improving our documentation with that kit so this is something that uh you're gonna have to uh to see soon on on our website the doc because right now the documentation is so so let's be honest um it's early so we're working on it it's gonna get better so that that's about it for for the kit that you get there excellent that sounds good okay so hopefully now everyone else can appreciate why i'm excited about this machine because it's got some pretty premium looking specifications and i don't know you've probably seen hopefully many of you have seen simon vez's channel vez 3d where he's obviously doing a lot of testing and i mean especially those high speed videos they're 
absolutely amazing. So if you've not seen that, you probably want to check him out. I don't think I, I think I forgot a link in the description, but I've linked the GitHub and I've linked 3D Mellow's, uh, Mellow 3D's AliExpress store. So if anyone interested in what's going on, we've got a couple of links down there. So what I've got here is the 235 kit, that's right. And this is an all wheel drive. So it's the four motors. You got two for, well, it's kind of X, Y, but also A, B, depending on how you want to denote them, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I call that quad X, Y or all wheel drive. Um, and the goal here was to have um, a better gantry, a better performance gantry. And with, with having four four motors like that, you're you're reducing the length, the total length of your of your belt stretch, and that really really helps on on resonance. So um, you have overall, you can crank the acceleration and speed without affecting performance too much. So that's that's what's good about all wheel drive system. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so let's get into the whole parts the parts bin that we've got here this is just there was a drag chain right in the top uh i'm guessing it maybe needed to be in a box but it's in the top but that's fine and we've got a power cable in there too uh so oh my goodness this box does weigh like 15 or 20 kilos doesn't it oh that that's, <laughs> it's heavy. that's a heavy box so if, yeah. if people are are wondering why the shipping is so this expensive is it includes all the the metal parts, all the CNC parts. Everything's metal, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be very heavy and expensive to ship. Um, in the future, we're we're gonna try to have uh, more resellers of those kits. There's already a couple of resellers in the U in the U.S. right now. So if you wanna order a kit and don't have to wait for the shipping, though the shipping is very very fast. I, I don't know uh, about you, Adam, but if you order one directly from Mellow on their a week you'll get the package which is crazy and it's crazy fast and well you pay for premium shipping as well so um that's that's kind of cool to get it that fast but having a local supplier is also uh better because we we're facing issues where um the taxes and shipping stuff and especially in in your europe where you live it it's a bit more complicated because it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's a nightmare with shipping. It's it, it's complicated. Each country has their own laws and and taxes and oh boy. Yeah, yeah um, it's a difficult difficult region to deal with. Okay, yeah. so let's get started with some of the boxes here. So this is just like the first layer within this huge box. We've got like five or six layers. Well, four or five, something like that. Four layers of stuff. So let's just go through the first layer, and we're basically just going to be taking a look at all the parts that we've got. So in here, this is like a screen. Yep. Okay, that's the LCD screen. I guess so we've got LCD Gen. Well, Fly LCD Gen five inch. And that's so, a DSI screen. So it's a five inch touch screen. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else yep. on it, so it's got to be a touch screen. Excellent. Obviously, by Mellow. I've just been looking at these uh, PCB standoffs actually recently for a separate project. They're like built into the PCB, aren't they? But they're quite... Anyway, it's slightly sidetracked, but yeah, that's a cool thing. I've just noticed as well there's a LiPo connector. You can... And someone was complaining, Adam, about your, your microphone clipping. Maybe it was too close from mouth. I, I don't know. Uh, it says testing, it's, it's better now. I mean, I've not had it this close to my mouth before, so maybe that's why it's clipping. I was monitoring the output, but it's seems fixed now. Hopefully on my side, you, right. you sound very good. That's that's good on my side. Okay, cool. So we've got touchscreen here. I don't know if it has a cover. I think it's maybe partly used. That's fine. Uh, so obviously that's going to mount out the front, and we've got a uh, ribbon cable there too. So that's box number one. I think this is going to take a little while. <laughs> I'm glad to see everything is is uh, well protected, well packed. So, because um, we, we've had so many bad experience with with shippers, incredible, like some stuff that came from Germany looked like it was dropped directly from the plane, and boom, <laughs> <laughs> the box was all ripped out and crazy stuff. So this yeah, at least... shipping everything is a bit. It's it's one of those things that like seems easy, right? You just put it in a box and it. You ship it, but like the amount of stuff that can go wrong is just absolutely mind-boggling. Oh yeah. Uh, 
does the screen connect to an SBC or to the control board? It connects directly to uh, the Pi. It's a uh, yep. DSi screen, so it has that ribbon cable. So it will be powered through the Raspberry Pi. So that's why you need a good power supply for the Raspberry Pi, which you can use the, the Super 8, the 3D printer board, to supply that 5 volt to the Pi. There's a little okay. trick there, but um, we can get at it later. So this was just a uh, selection of cables. I'm not sure exactly what they're for yet, but I'm sure we'll find out a little later on. I'm sure uh, you're so... going to find a lot of uh, cables, and you still have to crimp those. It's not We haven't gone yet through having all pre-crimped and pre-made cable. That might come later down the road. Um, it, it's just a lot of work to to build those kits and to make those kits. So it's, it's a better kit, so you're probably also going to find some missing screws or, or stuff that needs to be change a bit but hopefully i think the kit is uh pretty close to being complete so that's why we, we we call it a beta kit so we we need your your feedback so we have our own kit that we are uh, currently building as well so we'll see um if we can make it better so this is not a kind of part that you typically see on many other 3d printers this is part of the kind of cpap cooling system is that right no that's the uh, hair dryer <laughs> the hairdryer. <laughs> now that's the CPAP fan. That that little sucker is uh, a powerful uh, blowing machine. It will it will give you tons of pressure, tons of flow to cool down. Because if you print faster, you need to cool faster. So yep. that's that's the system that comes with it. So it's so it looks uh, like this is the controller that's a board. controller board. Yeah, yeah, runs on twenty four volt. You know you got a serious fan when the fan itself needs its own controller board. <laughs> it's a serious fan. You'll you'll see and you'll be able to hear that little sucker when when you turn it on full blast. It's uh it moves some hair. Not hair, sorry, air. <laughs> <laughs> and then is this a like a controller? That's a, a, that's... Yeah, that's the potentiometer, but you're not going to use it. You're going to use a PWM signal from your yeah. your 3D printer board to control that fan. Sure. Presumably you could that's... you could you could use the potentiometer if yeah, you want to do this manual. On... Yeah. So that's for that's for power cooling. Yeah. Uh... Yep. This is I like those... a bunch of other fans. So we got. Yep. Uh... 4010 those fans. Are, those oh, are the those fans are the to cool right? down your, your 5160 drivers. Yeah. And then we've got a, I think it's 2010. That's 20 a 30, 3010? 3010. That's for the Goliath air cool. Uh, uh, yes, end. we'll get to the Goliath in a bit. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah. So these are the uh, stepper driver boards. So these are external driver boards. Right, so yep. they're separate, complete, completely separate to the control board, but obviously the control board is still driving them. Why can I not get this out of here? Yeah, those are external, and the uh -huh. reason why we, we went with those is because they deliver tremendous amount of power. They can deliver a tremendous amount of power. They can feed your steppers all the way up to 6 amp, if I'm not mistaken. 5 or 6 amp, I think it's 6. And as you can see there, they have those uh, big capacitors and uh, that stores energy really to to punch. So it's it's a very good driver, well made, and yeah, it delivers what you need. So when you need lots of current in a very small time scale, it's useful to have those capacitors because they are what allow high current capacity at a very for a very small short time. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the gate, the external gate on it is twelve volt instead of the normal. Most of the step stick are, are five volts uh, gate. So having it at 12 volt is what TMC recommends for those drivers. When you go mm -hmm. with like high voltage, in our case, we're using 48 volts. It will um, keep them cooler and will, uh, uh, you're not gonna waste as much energy and heat with, with that 12 volt gate. So that driver is, um, is very good. As you can see, all those little chips there are, are MOSFETs. And this yeah. is where uh, the heat will, will be coming out. But it doesn't heat as much as those step sticks normally. So with that, with that cooler that you have there yeah, in the box, I see you've got well, a, uh, a heat sink to go on the top. Yeah, yeah. 
and, so and that, there's that goes also along something... the MOSFETs there. Does it does it touch the because there's like a little MCU here as well? Oh, this is the actual driver, isn't it? That's the 5160 chip. It doesn't need to be cooled down. You, all you care it's about is MOSFET. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's something cool that we're, we're going to be coming up with very soon is a, a water cool um, version of the, well, a water cool edition for, for cooling those drivers with a, um, what you call a, sorry, I'm losing my English there, but um, a propagation a board, a what do you call that in, in English? Um, the what, sorry? What, what kind of thing? Uh, it's, a, it's a water cool where it, it, you have one in, one out, but it splits up in, in many um, a distribution block. Thank you, yeah. Twinkies. Dist yeah. <laughs> I wasn't getting block. the word there either. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a distribution block to cover these. Yeah. Well, it's to just honestly, water to it's, it's not well. needed. I mean, air cool on these are, are perfectly fine. It's just... Um, it's a just bit of to extra add fun. some yeah, coolness. It's like modifying your, your car. It doesn't make it better. It's just make it, it, look, it looks better and it's cool. We, we all like cool stuff. At least I do. I mean, not everyone is like me, but I know lots of guys <laughs> are and they, they like when their printer looks very good and very uh, movie like or anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm just seeing, so these are, because these are external drivers, you obviously got to connect them kind of to the standard place. So presumably that's what this and this is for. So this goes in the standard place on the control board and then you connect it via cable into here. Yep, yeah, exactly. And this just sits next to it. Yeah, okay, cool. So it still uses sense? step stick. So yeah, and you could use those drivers on, on any kind of 3D printer board where you have a step stick uh, port. You just plug that in, use a cable and drive them externally. Excellent. And those are 48 volt drivers. They give me 48. Yeah, 48, 48 volts. 48 yeah. volts. Yep. Yeah. So there's a question in, in this in uh, in the chat where uh, Ella Fox wants to know how close is it from the printer I have here in the back. It is almost exactly the same. So you get everything I have in the back. The only difference is you got the air cool edition, and I'm running the water cool edition. Um, the difference there is when you run the Goliath in a shorter version with the extruder being the heatsink, um, the Goliath gets way shorter. So you remove the heatsink and and you use the extruder as the heatsink. So you get a shorter liver, it's lighter. The the thermal break there is also way better. So overall you get a a, a sharper or better extruding system because you know, the closer you can get to the hot end with the extruder, the better it will be in terms of pressure advance, in terms of retraction and control of the precision on the extrusion. So you get the air cool, but if you want, you can upgrade that later. Or um, I'm going to try to work with Melo to have a option to, you know, go straight to the water cool system. So that that might be coming very soon. At least uh, I'd like to have a... a a water cool ready kit for for people that wants to go that route. Excellent. So, what are these? These are like spaces of some kind with some springs. That, that that's for your your bed. Okay. Um, I mean, I think he included the springs to give you the option to option, go one yeah. or or the other. I personally use uh, silicon spacers on mine. I mm -hmm. think those are are better better dampening better control of 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 everything the yeah. they tend also to keep their their tension better and not you know so i obviously it's optional you choose what what will i don't know why i included those springs but <laughs> you get extra parts it's a free gift i guess and then we got mostly screws and stuff in here uh, do, do, screws, 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 screws. So screws, I guess this nuts. box is for mostly the Z system. I, I, I think it's just labeled know. standard parts. So standard parts, just general yeah. hardware for all the things. I think. Yep, that's your. I suppose they are kind of screw uh, boxes. Those are all M5. Those I don't know. It's a bit of a mix. There is some. M4s here. But you said yeah, this... Hopefully, we got 
most of the screws covers, but um, from an experience with our VZ330 kits, uh, we had to readjust over time because we were finding some missings here and there. And uh, it takes a bit of time to have everything very, very precise as a kit. Just, it's hard to have every freaking bolt in there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying, we're trying. We're trying. It's, a, it's one of those things, again, that sounds simple in theory, like shipping things. You just put it in a box and you'd send it. But like getting the bill of materials correct, when, when you've got like five things, it's fine. You can like put them on a desk, you see them all, put them in a box and it's gone. But when you've got like hundreds of parts, every time you've got new parts, you've got new like different boxes to put them in, different ways you're buying them and all this kind of stuff. Just, yeah. The more complex it gets, the more difficult it is to get them all in the box at the same time, at the right place, at the right time. So here we've got the control board, I believe, the motherboard, which Looks is like a it. Super 8. That's a Super 8 um, controller board. So and it's the, pro, it's the Pro version. We have switched to um, the Pro version instead of the, the standard version, which has the, the faster CPU. So now you get a, a high-performance 3D printer board in that, in that kit. This is a pretty huge control board. <laughs> yeah, it has uh, eight drivers. It has uh, everything you need. And what's cool about this board Thank is on guys. the fan, the fan ports. Those are all selectable voltage. You can go from five volt, twelve, or twenty-four, depending on on your need. And they have replaceable MOSFETs. So if you ever um, been stupid like me, I've blown a couple MOSFET on other boards. Well. I just uh, did a oops on the electronics and I blew up a, a MOSFET. And if you do this on this one, well, first of all, it's it's normally well protected, but if it blows up, you can replace it without losing a port. And, you know, that's just, you remove it, it's pluggable, you put it back. So that's a good thing that's about it. That's for these, um, I think I spotted them in here. That's what yep. these little uh, PCB things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It comes in in packs this is two, two right? and yeah, yeah. You just uh, snap them apart. Yeah, and you plug them in. It doesn't matter the orientation where you put them, so you can put them either way. It's not going to matter. These are very difficult to film. They're so tiny. <laughs> yeah, don't lose them. I think you have a couple extra, maybe one or two, but um, yeah, it's good to keep them. And you have yeah, your, your fuses and, and everything should be there. You also have your cable to feed the Raspberry Pi, uh, that white cable you see there. You can so connect that. Yeah, there's a CAN, CAN port on, on that board, and it will transfer that CAN to USB so you can feed the, the Pi with that. Okay. Uh, one thing to note here is when you do this, um, it's going to be, and, and you have a, a screen powering up uh, with the Pi power. You need to add a little uh, 5 volt on top of that. And I've used um, the screen port. There's a, a 5 volt port, but anyway, I can, it's going to be in a wiring diagram eventually. But yeah, it, it requires a bit more power when you have a, a DSi screen. And if you're adding a USB camera on top of that, everything will be driven from the Pi power. So you need to have a very good power supply. Or you yeah, can okay. drive it with an external power supply if you prefer. I might use... Uh, so I have this product that's sort of not quite released yet. Uh, called ElectroPi. It's a... Oh, do I have one a hand? Yeah, I've never worked with anything else than Raspberry Pi. I was lucky or i can't say smart enough because i didn't know it was coming but i had a a box of maybe 10 raspberry pi that were there so i didn't have to to buy new new ones because the price of them got really really expensive and we are working on a another solution so fly will have they already have their fly pi but it doesn't have a, a dsi connector for the screen it doesn't have other stuff so um I know Fly is working, Fly and Mellow is working with the new 
generation, FlyPi 2, which will have DSi connectors for the screen and will have better performance chip on it. So that might come in a near future and might be included in the kit as well later on. So, so that's this, a small device. This is ElectroPi. So it's not a Raspberry Pi replacement. It's a Raspberry Pi power supply. Oh, okay. So you use this header down here and plug it into a Raspberry Pi. And then you apply 24 volts here and you get five volts, five amps, which you can power directly to the Pi and through an auxiliary header as well. That's so cool. it's not quite finished yet. The, uh, there'll be some modifications to this design. This won't be what it looks like finally, but working on that as a kind of high power supply, high power, high quality power supply for a Raspberry Pi. Hopefully coming soon-ish. Yeah. And uh, there's a question in the chat from Stefan. Yes, we are um, planning to have more suppliers in, in the, the Europe because uh, also in UK. Um, but it's going to be, I, I hope soon, uh, it's just there's a, a lot of logistic and a lot of uh, complication with that. But we are uh, actively working on it. Hopefully that will be something uh, happening soon. Yeah, it's a complicated issue, isn't it? Uh, I was trying uh, to, I was looking at, I could stock like kits for maybe not only this, but other, other things as well. And uh, like the space needed to be able to stock these kits is just, you need a lot of space. And I just don't have that room. I just yeah. want to mention, you were looking way better when the camera was way down. Well, I just, so you can't see my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just stealing it. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. I still can't lift the box. So hit, it might be easier just to pull this layer out like this. So this is obviously, it's a bunch of extrusion. I don't know how much. So this is all 2020 extrusion, right? Yep. That should be your frame kit. And what kind of method do you use for joining uh, at the corners? Uh it's uh, blind joints. Okay. And um, we also, normally the kit should have come with uh, L-shaped corner bracket, 90 degree, but I think uh, the beta kit are missing. Uh, Mellow's aware we will be adding those to the kit. You're also going to be missing the little rubber feet. We have uh, printed feet on under the frame, but they are hiding a rubber feet on there. This is uh, missing in the kit as well. It was like five bucks to order. Um, you, you, can, you can run the printer without them first. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, I really uh, recommend you get those as well. Um, so if you got a beta kit, you might be missing those kits. There is a bomb on GitHub for those if, you, if you're wondering uh, where to get them. But they're, they're very cheap. Cool, cool, cool. OK. Uh... And you have your Z chain there for the bed. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right. I need space to put this. Uh, da, da, da. Do you have a girlfriend, Adam? Not currently, no. Okay, so put it on the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> so we're what? That's the, the still the first layer? That's the second layer in the box, right? So that's all the first layer. Now we're down to layer two. Oh, that's and only this... first layer. Jeez. Yeah. How, how long have we taken to do just one layer? I think we're going to have to up the speed a bit. 28 minutes. <laughs> oh, eight minutes? Okay. 28 minutes. Okay, so here we got power supplies. Power supplies. Good. Should be 124, so... 148. Yeah, 148 volt. So they're both mean well. Yep. I've just seen actually, these are LRS type. That can be some feedback. <laughs> so I don't know if you know, the, the LRS type power supplies are not compliant in the UK. Just move. <laughs> that's, that's one, that's one method. <laughs> There's always one quick solution. Yeah. You might want to look at uh, RSP is like, it's basically exactly the same size and shape. They're a little more expensive. But they're, I guess, compliant in the UK and Europe. Okay. You probably won't, I, no one, I don't think anyone's going to have any major troubles running them, but RSP is definitely the way to go. I wasn't aware of that. I mean, no, it's, I it's know, one I know of those little known things. 
Yeah, lots of things are more dangerous there than here. I think it's so my understanding is that there's I don't know I don't understand it like fully like electrically, but there's something called power factor correction, which you have in some power supplies, but the LRS doesn't have power factor correction. So the way that the power supply draws current from the main circuit is without power for power factor correction causes some sort of harmonic distortion, which basically raises uh power draw for every device on that mains network i don't fully understand it it's <laughs> i don't know how big the effect is but whatever i'll look it at it i'll look yeah. at it oh you have a donator Maze. my buddy Maze gave you 25 euros yeah that was super kind you, you have to buy rum with that that's the only that's the only <laughs> way to do it <laughs> Right, accessories. Aha, this is where it gets good, eh? We've got some juicy stuff in here. Right, the thing that I've immediately spotted. That's your <laughs> Goliath hot end. This thing is an absolute monster. It, it, it looks big, it's, uh, it, it is big. But it's big, but it it's is small at the same yeah. time. And it gets way smaller when you go water cool and you shrink that and you remove the heat sink. That makes it uh, better, but it's it's a good. Um, but considering the size like of that. the melt zone, it's like, <laughs> your melt zone is like 60 millimeters long or something, isn't it? Uh, 50. 50. That's enormous. So you can used... deliver deliver uh, all the way up to um 120 maybe with bigger nozzle uh cubic centimeter uh cubic millimeter cubic yeah, yeah sorry so what's this type of heater this is obviously a different type of heater to the kind of cartridge it's, things you normally see this is a a, a nichrome uh heating wire surrounded mm -hmm. with some i think it's magnesium to isolate it so if you're wondering why it's not shorting like that touching the the copper heat block it's because it's insulated those yeah. those uh wires are insulated so it doesn't matter if if they touch obviously they touch they touch through the the heat block but it it gives a overall um better heat distribution all around the hot end so and it, it heats up quite fast it's a 100 watt uh hot end so massive um power there so like my understanding is nichrome wise the same heating element used in standard cartridge thermistors is this is obviously just like a a completely different form factor for how that nichrome's integrated into the final product into the actual heating element yeah same thing in your oven if you're wondering or your yeah yeah super good heaters have we got any questions uh no i don't think so okay this thing is absolutely huge it's yeah <laughs> i'm a fan i, it's, I look it's forward huge, to testing but it not that big i mean the heat plug it, it's long obviously but it's uh it's small it's 10 millimeter diameter all the way so it's not that big but yeah it's i mean if you compared performer. the overall length comparing the overall length to something like rapido like it's it seems pretty similar because obviously your heat sink area is really small yeah it's and smaller you just you just basically swap out heat sink for heater and it's uh yeah that's really neat so the the heat break i can see copper and is there still titanium in the heat break uh no it's zirconia oh okay. it's a type of uh kind of ceramic type of thing it's super abrasive resistant um and uh very low heat conductivity so that's a very good uh heat break yeah you can see that there yeah, Melo didn't want me to color. say it was zirconia but it is zirconia they prefer to say um space space uh i don't know how they call that um but like space type <laughs> grade uh material <laughs> this is just zirconia there's no there's no secret in there uh and then we got brackets this is oh so this is a screw in thermistor yeah yep that's your pt 1000 yeah so where does okay yeah halfway yeah, it down. screws on yeah it screws on 
And um, there, there's one thing about that sock is uh, you have to remove the PT-1000 to insert that that um, sock, but you could, like, a lot of people just uh, use their scissor and just straight cut. It, yeah. it, it will hold on just fine, so maybe that would be something we could do on the manufacturing side just to make it easier to remove the sock without having to remove the PT-1000. So if you want to do this, just slide it through the long the, the edge there, and uh, it will not affect uh, anything there. But I didn't do it on my side. I rarely remove the hot end from my printer. Yeah. When I was pr prototyping it, I was, but not anymore. It stays there. It's been there. Uh, never had any issue with it. Those are your stop switch. Switch uh, is. This is a a bracket for something, isn't it? Uh, that's for your print head. Oh no, that's the the bracket for your 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 bed. This is where your chain. This is the chain mount, basically. Okay. Okay. Yep. So is it all aluminium parts in this kit? Do I need to print any FDM stuff? This is all aluminum, but you still have to uh, print uh, stuff like, uh, you know, the exhaust fan, all the trims around the um, the panels. You have to print your enclosure for your screen. And there's a couple parts you need to print, obviously, uh, to make it complete. So if you don't have access to a printer, we have been working, mostly my team, I've been working on a easy VZ program. So if you know the PIF program for Voron, where you yeah. can uh, print it forward, that's what they call. We um, created a, a similar kind of program with the EV, easy VZ program. And I'm gonna discuss about it a bit later, maybe next week on my YouTube, but you can ask providers to get you all the printed parts and uh, Providers are, are, are rated based on, on their service and quality. So you can uh, get all the parts. If you don't have a printer, you still can build a VZ, but don't worry. We got you covered now. So you can get all the parts and, and build that monster. But it sounds like with the aluminium parts, like most of it, most of the functional parts, right? Most of the strength driving parts are aluminium. And then your plastic parts are mostly like add-on aesthetic pieces, enclosure pieces. Yep, that's about it. Yep. But I guess it's not it's not quite enough to be able to build. If I was to build all this kit, and then could I print the parts that I need for the rest of it? Or um, what do you reckon? Um, let me think. You know, because uh, there is no. You probably won't be able to do that. Not quite. Now there's a couple parts you need for the front motors. Um, you need printed parts to. There's a little spacers that will hold the, I guess you could. That That's something I will have to think more and, and analyze uh, what parts is needed. So uh, we've got, looks like lots of tiny little aluminum brackets. Oh, is, this is like the carriage pieces, right? That's the VZ print head, yep. Yeah. And you got the black edition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, looks good. I I love it in all black. That's a that's a good choice. It looks amazing. It looks good. It looks good. It works good. And that thing is uh what what I call a a universal print head because it can fit many hot ends. It can fit many extruders. Uh, I built it in a way that you can fit many things and adjust the fan height and you don't have to reprint a, a different dock every time. So it's a, it's a, I think it's a good print head. Um, could be better if it wasn't made for being universal. There's a, a couple sacrifices we had to make to make it universal, but yeah. still, it still is a, a, a very good print head. Uh, rigid, it's acting also as a heat dissipator. So that's another good feature is about using metal. It's not going to melt. Uh, GNZ, I'm, I'm based in uh, Canada. I'm in Quebec. And, and my accent is because I'm a French guy. <laughs> and I don't speak English very well. You, you can speak English a lot better than I can speak French. <laughs> Yeah, we can switch in French if you'd like. <laughs> you know what? I'm good. 
I think I think we'll probably best stick with the English. Uh, so wait, that was Printhead. Yeah, there was the extruder here as well. I got to so. I've not used this extruder before. It's a it's a good extruder. Um, it has a couple nice features on it. It has a twirl filament gear. So uh, that fixes one of the artifacts that can be created with the teeth biting at a constant rate on the filament. So that, that is fixed. It's also, uh, the filament gear is also one piece with the shaft. So there's no grub screw to screw it on and make it eccentric. So that will stay centric. Um, that rear uh, palm gear is also CNC. So it should be in theory a lot more precise than those molded uh, gears, mm -hmm. and then you have a helicoil drive on on the filament gear, so uh, down here. Yep. And that's, that's the that's the air cool edition of that VZX. There's also one that is water cool, where we added water uh, passages inside to keep the the heat break cool. But if you want to upgrade later, uh, you only need to buy the body of that extruder and uh, the little adapter plate to bolt the Goliath on it, and you're, you're, you're good to go. And the heat break, because the heat break will be a little different. Um, the normal heat break for the long version of Goliath is a chip Chimera, Chimera? I don't know uh, if I pronounce it yet, but Chim yeah, uh, Chimera, yeah, it's a yeah, seven, like seven, seven millimeter uh, diameter heat break. And on the Goliath, obviously the, the filament path here is was made for a PTFE tube of five millimeters. So we had to design a new uh, heat break that will just uh, fit in the, the extruder at the bottom. So there's another hole at the bottom. So this is where the heat break will, will fit in. Yeah. So this is, you said five millimeters. Did you mean four millimeters? Standard I four said, millimeters. I said five. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I That's need fine. more coffee. Just, just double checking. Yeah, four millimeter. Four millimeter. Like so it's the standard standard PTFE tube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we got our SSR. So the mains powered bed, right? Yep, that's the SSR relay for yeah. your 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 bed. So we're driving the bed. It's gonna be, um, I think, five hundred watt bed, and that's your power switch. Yep. With a a fuse. Right. Okay, I think that's everything for that box. There was a lot in there. <laughs> yeah, you might want to check later on when you build it what what is the size of that fuse because I heard it would it could be uh, a bit too small. It should be 10 amp. Uh, you guys yeah. are on two 220 volts, right? 220, 230, 240, somewhere in there. Yeah, they're all kind of the same. Yeah, it varies. All right, <laughs> depending well, on the size of the yeah, day. Yeah, it, it just <laughs> yeah, it depends how you measure it. All right, so what else do we got in that box? Uh, you're taking a lot of care to repack everything. I would just... <laughs> well, <laughs> because, just, just because I want to do this like as a weekly thing, uh, instead of just doing it like day after day, I know that I'm going to need to pack it up at some point because <laughs> I'm going to need this space to do something else. Yeah, it takes a quite. It takes a bit of time to to build that machine. Uh, you're gonna need, depending on how many hours a day you're willing to put it on, but um, it will more, more most people will be able to build it in two weeks, a, a full week if you put a lot of hours on it a day. So here, oh, oh a nut's just falling off. That looks good. How is it protected inside the box? I, I didn't see that. Was it because um, we, we, we've designed the foam to go surrounding everything? Yeah, yeah. cool. Awesome. Yeah, so obviously that was. Oh! <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I think the uh, the box could be thicker. But yeah, but at least it's, it's, all, it's all well arrived surrounded by foam, so that's good. So this is obviously that's, the gantry assembly. This is the whole gantry, right? That's the whole gantry. And it comes pre-assembled. Um, you're just going to have to replace those uh, parts because those uh, red parts that are printed, they're probably on, on with PLA. They were just 
put there assemble for transportation yeah. Yeah. but you need you need abs obviously unless you don't plan to um enclose that print. but still if you don't enclose that printer motors will generate heat enough to maybe affect those those red parts so the kit comes with uh, all ldo rails um, mm -hmm. we have mgm uh, 12 on the y and then mgm 9 on the top of x the x should be um light preload and uh y should be no preload yeah that feels like what we got Excellent. That and you looks got so a good carbon, in black. You got a carbon rail here as well, yeah? Yeah, that's the X is in uh, carbon fiber. It's difficult and to see that it's actually working, carbon fiber. Yeah, there we're working on a um, full yeah. aluminum one, but carbon fiber is probably better for most people. It, lo it looks good. I like yeah. it. It looks really good in black, doesn't it, actually? It's, uh... Oh, man, yeah. My, mine is uh, a mix. Well, all the aluminum parts are, are uh, on, on paint, not, not painted, but um, uh, shoot, I lost the word. But yeah, mines are... Anodized all... for aluminum? Anodized, yeah, 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 anodized. So that's your gantry. And, and you, should, you should have those uh, superpower LDO motors in, in that kit. Yes, can yeah, you, they say. Can confirm. Good. Those motors are probably the best motors out there that you can get for a 3D printer right now. They are super quiet, powerful motor. They have very good performance. I, I'm very happy with those. And we worked with LDO to build them, and they are specifically made for uh, all-wheel drive VZ butts. You'll see that they don't have uh, a D-cut on, on the motor shaft. They are round, so that will allow you to bolt the, the pulleys anywhere around the shaft. You don't have to use a, 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 a spot. And the reason behind that is to be able to synchronize all motors uh, together in an all-wheel drive configuration. So that way, motors uh -huh. are not fighting against each other with mechanical stuff. And I have some videos explaining that um, a bit deeper, but yeah, that's why we decided to go with a full round shaft. And if you're wondering if it's strong enough, if the pulleys will, will slip on the shaft, no, not going to happen. Uh, I've pushed it to like 3,000 millimeters, 80K. They stayed, <laughs> didn't move. Uh, so there's a question about are the, grails re are the grails reased? I mean, are the rails greased? Uh, uh, no, I believe they're stainless steel rails, aren't they? They are stain they are the stainless steel version, and you can yeah. differentiate them. Uh, LDO has two version. If you have the black caps around your your sliding blocks, yeah, that is a stainless steel. If it has the red caps, it is normal uh, steel grade uh, GR15 or whatever it is. But yeah, those are are the higher quality rails from LDO. Yeah, and, so you'd um, have to if you want to grease. You'd have to grease yourself. There's no hole directly, is there, for the MGN9? Yeah, that's one of, uh, the only one downside about using um, LDO. There is one, but it's really, really, really tiny. I think you need a a, a, a syringe to, to reach them. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, a little I mean, more... It's, I don't know. I mean, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong here, but because the loads on 3d printers are actually relatively low compared to like what these rails were originally designed for lubricant is actually technically sort of optional especially with stainless steel because you don't need it for corrosion resistance like you do with carbon steel because it's not going to rust really in like a home environment and like well, you're going to get a benefit from some lubrication but like it wouldn't be absolutely necessary if you didn't lubricate it it's not like it's going to die in a week not going to die in a week, but you better lubricate them. Yeah. It's going to help for friction as well. And it's just, it's just better to keep them lube. I, I personally use um, a lubricant from, it's a PTF based lubricant that I use um, from Super Lube. And I know there's a lot yeah. of people that will be against that, but I, I, I like it because it, it gives super smoothness on on those rails and it can achieve uh super high speed uh but i would definitely go with something that ldo recommends 
if you want the super long term uh, life of your rail. But I've been running my rails for like it's been two years now with, with crazy stuff I do. And I, I, I don't feel anywhere. They're still super, super good shape. So how is the VFA on those motors? They are way better than the speedy version, I think. Um, well, way better. They are better than the 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 speedy. Um, you can hear that just by the sound. They will they will vibrate a lot less, though they still have that um, speed around 100 millimeters and around 50 millimeters per second, where you'll find them a lot more well a lot noisy and avoid just using them on straight lines at that because you're going to get you're going to get uh resonance but um when you go at 100 millimeters per second with a vz but like that it's because you print tiny small details and tiny stuff that it will not matter you're not going to print 100 millimeter on the straight line never going to happen um if you do this it's probably not the printer for you so that's uh that's a speed printer with okay, high, so, high quality. Uh, still More on the fans. same layer. So we got a huge stepper motor here. What's this stepper motor for? Oh, this will be the Z motor, right? Yep. So you got a single uh, Z motor and three screws, is that? Nope, there's, uh, there's only two screws. Two screws, One on right. each side, yep. one single. Uh, the Z stays uh, sync like that. It's a very basic Z, but very good working Z, I think. Um, at least I get very high quality Z layering with that. So that's so an LDO that's 60 a, millimeter. It's um, absolutely huge motor. 60 millimeters is a big degree. boy, isn't it? it? It has a lot of torque. And if you were yeah. wondering if that is enough power with only one motor to lift that, because the Z is all aluminum. You got a, a big bed plate full of aluminum, eight millimeter, and you got another uh, bed plate assembly, the bed carriage we can call it that way that is also eight millimeter uh, aluminum so it's heavy if you're wondering if it's strong enough it is i've even on my uh, 330 version which is way bigger it's heavier and i've done some testing with all the way up to a 50 pounds dumbbell on the print bed just to see if it was able to lift it and it has no issue lifting it yeah. don't forget with lace screws you you get tons of torque yeah, um, there's there's a the lot of mechanical is just... advantage, isn't there, in those lead screws? Because it's like pushing up a very, very shallow slope. That's what yeah. basically a screw is, right? So, yeah, yeah you get a huge advantage. Uh, and then we've got a couple more fans. So we've got this, uh, what's this, 60 mil by 20? Yeah, that, that should be your exhaust fan. Your, okay, uh, there's a couple. Exhaust filter there's two fan. of those. Yeah, there should be two. So we are yeah. uh, filtering with um, HEPA filter plus carbon activated. Nor the fan normally uh, kicks in at the end of your print to filter everything going out. And then you have your two RSCS uh, fan there, the little uh, radio fan. These two, this little, is... there's nothing little about them. <laughs> well, compared yeah. to the VZ330, which is 120. Is it... Wow, uh, okay. This, these are this little. This is little in comparison, yeah. So what are, th what are these for? Uh, this is for the RSCS, what I call the remote static cooling system. Uh, those little fan ducts that you see on both sides of the printer that will cool down your active layer all at yep. once. Yeah. So that's the those 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 fans are, are for cooling because uh, we move so fast on the print head that your your cooling on the print head doesn't stay long at the same place. So yeah. this fan will just uh, and it also helps to keep air circulating in the enclosure so your enclosure is stabilized and you have stable temperature throughout the Z. Uh, and then we got these bearings. So these are obviously for holding the uh, the bed carriage, right? Yeah, these that's your Z, your Z bearings. 10 millimeter. Yeah. LMK 10 LUU. Yep. Those are your, your Z bearings. Nice. So we've got four of those. Yep. Someone's asking, am I an engineer in my day job? I am not. Well, I, my, my title, my official title is system engineer. I work for an American company, but this is not a mechanical engineering. This is a, I'm more of a system administrator working with computers. So that's my, my day job. So I've been learning a lot since uh, 
I have engineers in my in my team. I have guys that are very talented, very knowledgeable. So I learned a lot from them, and I keep learning from from them. I'm very happy to be surrounded with my my team. So that's like the third layer in the box. This is layer number three. Yeah. So firstly, let's get a look at these. Uh, there's a bunch of what look like aluminium CNC plates for various things. I love aluminum parts, if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all your, your Z assembly. So you have so we your... Got, um, these are obviously like the holders, the right? These are hold, hold your uh, yep, rods. Yeah, the top, top rod holders. And then these are for the lead the screw. Lead screws. So you got... If, is this, is that like a bottom and a top and then another bottom and a top? Uh, yeah, this is both at the bottom. This is both at the bottom of your, uh, of your printer. Um, let me see if I can show this to you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. don't do that yet. Because <laughs> if you share the screen, it moves on the, on the Discord call. Oh, I won't, I won't do that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, is, uh, this, is, this stays at the bottom. It holds your, in a sandwich, it holds your, your lead screw at the bottom. So this is where yeah. the weight of your bed will be sitting on. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then we've got rods, so Z rods. Uh, presumably these are hardened steel. Yep. Yeah. And why do you say Z? I, I always say Z. But I guess it depends on. on I changed. On you did I did I just say Z just then? Uh, it's I, up I mean, to you. I I, I just... grew up. I mean, the normal so correct British English, I believe, is to say Z. But I grew All up right. watching a lot of American TV, so I ended up saying Z, and now it just seems to switch between whether I say Z or whether I say Z. <laughs> some things just yeah. feel like more natural to say Z. Some feel more natural to say Z. In French, it's Z. Right. So that's that's a good way. But um, I've called it a VZ butt, and I mean, it doesn't doesn't really matter. <laughs> but that's why people we call it e about. easy VZ program. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like in that in that case, it would sound weird saying it with a Z, wouldn't it? It just feels like it takes like it doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely. Another question in a chat from Stefan is asking if we ever thought of a VZ120. No, because we have a VZ150 that is, uh, it's still, I would still call it like beta, um, but it's based on the VZ235, just scaled down. And uh, 150 is, is not as small as 120, but I don't think we're going to go 120. 150 would be the very smallest that we we want to go so there's a couple guys that build a vz 150 uh one in particular it's a it's a beast smaller means uh, less moving mass on on y so it's a it's a fast printer so that's all the rest of the the z parts so you got an old coupling so this is your decoupling for Yep, Z? that's your, your old amp couplers for Z. This is to allow or remove any misalignment in, in your assembly. And if your lead screw is bent or if it's wobbling somehow, this will go on, on that and will take it without creating a Z wobble on your print. And you have your, your pulleys for Z. And How come they, we got two of a larger size and one of a smaller size. Yeah, one goes on your motor, on your Z motor, the smaller one. And these one. two go on the... Uh, yeah, for a, a one to two ratio. So you're, you're doubling up your, your torque there, plus the lead screws, you're, you're adding more torque. So there's, there's a lot of power on that Z. And it's not that much that you can't go high axial on Z. You know, when you, you Z up, the, the machine can really Z up, like, instantly. Yep. So that's... Um, that's a good thing. I, I wanted to have a, a very quick Z because we could have gone with a higher lead screw with a lead of two millimeter, but I kept the eight millimeter just because it's it can Z up very quickly. And that's your, your bed assembly. The bed I think uh, it's picked carriage. up uh, some uh, debris in the box, but the actual coating itself I think is good. 
Is it good on both sides? Uh, what's on the other side? Where's the logo? You should logo see the logo. is down here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can only just... You know what would be really cool? I mean, it's probably uh, annoying to do. Aluminum you finish color. it. Finish it first and then see and see the logo out. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you can barely see. The, I mean, obviously, the difficulty then is you're re-machining something that you've already machined and you risk damaging it all back. But Yeah. But I've had complaint of too many logos. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'd, be, I'd be careful uh, adding more visual It's nice logo. and subtle, at least, like this, yeah. <laughs> that's a solid plate, though. Eight millimeter aluminum, did you say this was? Yeah, that's an eight aluminum. Yeah. Do you know what spec? Is it 6,000 T6 or something? Uh, it should be, um, if you get it from F3D, it should be mix six from mellow. It should be 5083, 50, I think. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's a lot of CNC stuff. Uh, it, and then... it, it's a lot of CNC, but it's so sexy. That is, and not only <laughs> sexy, it's, it's good. Functional. Uh, functional. So now Bunch is of your cable uh, management uh, stuff. Electronic rails stuff. And, uh, yeah. I don't think anyone's that excited about those. <laughs> uh, we that's, also got that's here. the worst part. That's the worst part of the bill is doing electronic. I think every bill that you build a DIY printer, the worst part is electronic. This is the most boring part, at least for me. Some people might, might really like doing that. I, I quite like it as long as I'm not in a rush. If I'm in a rush, it's horrible. It's annoying and it gets frustrating. But if I'm not in a rush, it's quite nice to just sort of sit down and relax and just methodically go through it step by step i think it's yeah it's it's fun to do it it's just long it's long so we've got a flexible magnetic sheet with pei looks like two magnets oh you, I'm not you, sure you got an two magnets. extra one i think i've got extra double magnets well you have two lucky you <laughs> <laughs> uh and then we've got the heater there's looked like i don't know what's happened to that it looks like it's Rubbed against, I, I think it's just rubbed against something in the box or something. I don't know. Yeah, that that could have I been it. it. Looks... I mean, it looks fine. It doesn't look damaged. Hopefully not. Yeah. I think it's just um, the logo that that. Yeah, yeah, I think a bit of smudge here. That bed plate looks uh, awesome, though. It looks adorable. <laughs> adorable. It's such a good size. <laughs> yeah, 235. I mean, and, and the reason why we decided to go with 235 is because um, the Ender 3 is 235. So that way we have parts available. You know, before we were even going to make a kit when we started this, we wanted to do this because beds were easy to source. Uh, PI sheets were easy to source. Everything was easy to source because Ender 3 is probably the most sold printer around the world, I would yeah. think. So that's the same size, same dimension, same everything. So we use that for that that reason. Yeah, very wise. Don't put your fingertips on it. I'll <laughs> clean it later, don't worry. <laughs> I'll give it a bath before we do the assembly. No, it's going to be covered anyway, though. So it's not yeah. a big deal. It's a bit of a shame that it ends up covered, really, isn't it? Because it looks uh, rather nice, quite like that. <laughs> right, right. We need some uh, see-through bed plates. Like transparent bed plates. I suppose you could use glass, but then you need a heater. I don't know, whatever. We've uh, we made it through three layers, so there's only one more to go. Only one more. So what are we missing? Um... Mostly panels, I think. Oh yeah, panels, obviously. Panels is gonna be useful. At, at the bottom. You need panels. You should have uh, two aluminum panels and the rest should be polycarbonate. I'll be there in just a second. <laughs> You're too slow. I'm busy tidying up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, those those panels, I know um, for sure they're um, the the bottom panel, the one in the back. Um, 
the first version, so you got a beta kit, the first version of those panels didn't have those holes to uh, bolt the PSU at the same configuration that I have here. I, I, I kind of used uh, um, the PSU as a frame to make the back engine, not, not engine, sorry, the back electronic bay. So uh, first we decided not to do them because we wanted to leave the opportunity to people to mount their power supply whenever they wanted. But after that, we decided that we're going to add it. And for the kit, you have it. If you don't want to use it, you could cover them. But um, I think yours not going to have those those uh, those screw uh, those holes for for the power supply. But I can do like what I did on the VZ three third. I can provide a a stencil to drill them if you okay. if you want them. I think I'm going to have to do this because a lot of people will will want that. At least there was ten kit beta kit sold. I don't know how many panels were made without those holes, but um, that that'll be a good thing to have. So here are the aluminium plates. Now, this is obviously it's, uh, the protective sheet. Oh, yeah. Although, that we being said, that. it would look quite good if that was like anodized in that blue color. It wouldn't match your red and black theme, would it? But it, <laughs> it's quite a nice yeah. blue. Yeah. Or you could paint it in black. Or I, I know some oh, people yeah. like to cover it with a uh, vinyl sheet, carbon fiber like stuff which looks good uh i personally left it all metal on my on mine so that's that's three millimeter aluminium yeah three millimeter aluminum uh that's stiff and it helps the overall frame rigidity when you bolt that in the back and torque it yeah, on the yeah. frame and you got your logo in the middle there there's a bit of a but yeah, you can see the tool part. pad, which which I like a lot with uh, aluminum parts. I like I like some yeah. people prefer that those are removed and 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 uh, polished, but I, I I like it like that. So I told Miller we need to see those tool pad. It's it's just awesome. It looks good. Uh, and then this is the other panel. That's the bottom plate. Also three millimeter. So kind of same sort of functionality with this one, designed to kind of, obviously not, it's, it, it encloses the machine, but adds rigidity and- It adds rigidity, but it will also, um, it will also help to uh, maintain or to stabilize or to straighten out the, the lead screw mount at the bottom. So before we went uh, CNC, we had printed parts for Frizi and uh, the parts printed are, not stiff enough to be reliable so we added that bottom plate the part is sitting on that bottom plate so that that bottom lead screw holder will not move so that okay. yeah. helps um to secure or to to hold the the weight of the bed so it's really it's really a must if you build a vz butt you need to have a bottom plate that the design of that lead screw mount were was just designed around that if you don't have it you're going to rely on plastic <laughs> rigidity and we yeah. all know it's not always uh good uh ella has a question what's the what kind of temps do you get when it's enclosed um well i i depends on on how high you heat the bed but you'll you'll be able to get around 50 uh easily and then i don't let my enclosure go higher than than 50 um, I, I don't want to go higher than 50. I don't need to go higher than 50. It prints super good with ABS, ASA, uh, all materials, nylon, everything, um, except for if you want to print real polycarbonate uh, material, you probably need a little higher enclosure temperature. But um, I, I still was able to print, well, it was a PC blend, so not a full polycarbonate, but PC blends are no issue, but you can go, you can go higher. That is a, a, a nice touch that was added um, to, this is your, your back electronic uh, backplate. And they are uh, made to go 
bolt to your, your power is supply. Like a... Is it a sticker or is it a vinyl? What? Ha... I honestly have no idea. This is a surprise <laughs> Mello didn't tell me about. I, I just told them we need that logo. I, I first asked them to it's really uh, laser it inside. Um, but now I see it and it's in color. Uh, I've seen it in a, another kit. It looks killer. I, I love it. I can't complain about that. And if you don't yeah. feel any sticker in the back, you don't feel anything in the back. This is... Which side are you supposed to see it from? Is that... I don't know. Yeah, you, I can't, they, I, it's not a sticker. I can't feel... That's, that's cool. Well, this is uh, upside down, so you, you should look at it well, when you're facing, yeah, like that. This is the front. That, that's a, yeah, like that. So if you don't feel it in the bottom or in the front or anywhere, I I don't know what's the recipe for for that. That's uh, but that's cool. I like it. Yeah, it could be really good. fused. Uh, I don't know if it's two layers of polycarbonate. I don't know. I can ask because I'm curious. I how was that made? Yeah, it looks really good. Good yeah, job. Uh, uh, looks sick. I'm I'm happy to see that. And then you have yeah. your other panels. Loads of other panels. Yep, standard polycarbonate. And on those uh, front doors, uh, you have um, a, a a beta kit as well. I you, you can see those holes in the front. Those are for your um, enclosure doors. Is that and, these holes? Uh, the hinges, yeah. Yep. And, and since we have a all-wheel drive uh, version and a two-wheel drive version, the motors are not the same. The, well, on, the, on, on the, the two-wheel drive, it doesn't sit at the same place. So there are two different hinges. And, and the, the panels were designed with both holes, so you have the, the option. But since the kit will come with uh, all-wheel drive only, I think, well, I've told Mel already, so next panel should only have one version of those holes. Okay. So, and then we got some slimmer panels here. Yep, those are the front side panels in the front. Okay, yeah. Going next to the doors. Yep. Yep, got it. And then more panels. That's the top panel. It has those little cuts for your your handle when you can lift the printer. I don't know where they're getting this polycarbonate from, but the fact that this sheeting pulls off really easily is really good. <laughs> a lot of yeah, the time you get these panels, yeah. it's like impossible. You spend half an hour peeling it off and then you, you pull it like an inch and it breaks. Whereas this just pulls straight off. That's really good. Yeah. Then you have your side panels. I think that's going to be it, man. Oh, yeah, it, it, it pulls off really easy. Yeah. Another panel. Then you have your, your, your holes are, are pre-done for the RSCS, so it's easy to, to just fit in there, install it. This is the only one I'm struggling with. <laughs> <laughs> this one's different. Yeah, even the, um, the sheet didn't look uh, the same. Still laser cut, I guess, so should be, should be, uh, Accurate in dimensions, and the hole should be all there at the right place. Right. Excellent, Excellent. job. And of course, the last thing here is the tube for the cooling fan, right? That's the the CPAP for the part tube? cooling. Yeah. And if people are wondering, the inside of that tube is smooth. It's not ribbed like the external. Yeah. You know, it looks like it, but no, it's smooth inside. So you don't lose too much of the uh, airflow to uh, pressure losses in it, the tube. Yeah, it's light, it's flexible. 
And that's everything. That is the whole kit. That is the the whole kit. That was it. That's uh, that's very exciting. You're gonna have a lot of fun with that. And since you don't have a girlfriend, I expect you to be done in four days. I give you four <laughs> days to do this. <laughs> well, four days, four weeks at one day a week. How about that? <laughs> no, take your time. Make it. Uh, do it, do it good. And if you need help, we're, we're there to help. There's a good community uh, around the VZBot. So if you're not on our disc, well, I think you are already, but um, if people want to join us, uh, we have Discord, we have Facebook, and lots of people are, are there and willing to help. We have also a awesome team in the VZBot team. People are so, so kind, so gentle, so respectful at the same time. So Feel free to join us. We we like to grow our family. So does anyone have any questions at this point? I'm not going to be starting assembly today. This is sort of it, technically wise. But if anyone has any questions for either of us about the machine, now is probably a good time to do that. Have you got a bit more time to hang around, Simon, or do you need to head off? No, I, uh, I'm, still, I'm still good. I have another 10 minutes. OK, cool. Let's see. <laughs> Maple Leaf Maker says, can I have it? That's their question. Uh, sure, I, guess you sure. I guess you can if you buy one. Yes. You just can't have this one. Yeah, this one's for you, man. Thoughts on Wobble X? Um, we really, really wanted to have the Wobble X on, on there. The only thing, the Wobble X were a little too big it was interfering with the rscs fan on the side so um it was not possible to add those on the build but as it is right now the z is working amazingly well don't worry about it it's uh it's a good z i i don't have any issue with that and it's uh yeah i mean olden couplings are pretty well-known standard for decoupling of linear motion so like it's it's a good standard for doing that i don't think there's going to be any issues wobble x obviously has that advantage for more axes of uh freedom but yeah and and the the ones that you got on the kit are the version two that we did which um before we had the lead screw nut plus we have the old am coupler now we've put everything in one package so the old am is at the same time the lead screw nut so oh, okay. you, lose, you lose nice. less yeah you, you lose less on on z with that uh the other question from stefan is how big is the vz bot team how many people you got uh i think we're under than 10. presumably various various levels of like time commitment some people are doing it all yeah, the time some and some people are, drop are more, in and out some people are more active of course we all have our 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 real life and this is all free free work that that we do um though so the vz bot started to generate a bit of profit and i try uh to reinvest those profit with the team and we 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 keep on developing like that so um it's uh it's a very nice team nobody has asked anything and they were all jumping in and were interested in 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 the project so um i was very and i'm still very blessed to have those people helping and and willing to to stay with me they're they're, they're become family now yeah, yeah yeah when you once you spend that much time people with people there yeah it does get that way um yeah so mark has a question sorry mr start does the kit contain everything or do you need to print parts so i guess i think i can answer that one uh there are no printed parts included uh, you will need to print some of the parts. Uh, as we talked about kind of midstream, it was like, you can't quite assemble everything you need to be able to print your own, but there is an upcoming easy VZ, uh, what do you call it? Like program program. Yeah. For providing printed parts for people that don't have printers or you just print the additional parts yourself. But this kit itself, a, a lot of the parts that would or could be printed are actually CNC aluminum. So you get a lot of strength from those aluminium parts and not having to not having to print pieces. So you save yourself some time, but there are still some printed parts which you'll want for like the enclosure, cooling duct and stuff like that. 
Uh, any thoughts about doing olden coupling with mixed materials like the rap rig? Um, right now, right now, this is uh, what we have um, brass and I, 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 I don't know. I think, uh, well, maybe I have never say never, but for now, this is going to be brass and it works. Yeah, very, I mean, if, if what you've got is. works, ultimately, there's uh, not necessarily reason to change, right? Uh, well, what are the easy, benefits easy. of you? Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was, I, I was going to say. So Anton says, "What are the benefits of using Mellowfly Super 8 mainboard versus other boards such as Octopus?" Well, I guess one of the reasons is Mellow's supplying the whole kit, right? So, so yeah, it, it makes sense be... to use a board that they create rather than one of their competitors. Exactly. It would be terrible yeah. if we were. <laughs> well, it, it would be okay, I guess. But you know, they they make the kit, so they will provide their electronics and honestly I, I i really like that board and those drivers i don't think there's anything comparable on the market right now i know makers uh, mks uh made um external drivers like that too but um the mellow ones are just uh are just good the that that's one of the reason why we get um uh, crazy speed like that uh, Maple Leaf Maker says, would ACM be a viable option in place of those solid aluminium panels? Well, I presume ACM is the uh, composite aluminium or dye bond. It has a few different names, but for anyone that doesn't know, it's like a, a POM plastic in the core, and then it has a sheet of aluminium either side. So the aluminium is quite thin, but it's just a, a low cost sheet material. You can you could go with uh, with that dye bond uh, material. That would be that would be another good option, and it would look also good. So so yeah, I think that's another as, for those doing a DIY option. ACM is quite an easy material to work with if you want to be able to drill it by hand and stuff. Well, you can drill aluminium by hand with like steel drill bits or whatever. ACM because the aluminium is very thin, but the material as a whole is still quite rigid it's it's quite easy to work with being like predominantly plastic yeah uh, yeah will the easy vz program have the same limitations of only vz printers can print parts for other vz printers so i think that's we, a, a question of like how voron does it where you have to have a voron printer to print the parts uh no we're not like that we're we're a bit like that. We 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 hate on every other printers. <laughs> no, no, we don't. We don't. No, uh, we have uh, we have we welcome anyone if if you want to to be part of the program. That's totally fine. All we care about is the printing quality, accurate dimensions. If you can bring that to help people, you're welcome. Uh, in fact, there's a, a a guy already in the VZ program from a Voron, a super fast Voron. He has a uh, very good quality, so he's part of the program. So no, you don't need to have a VZ butt to make VZ butt parts. It's nah. As long as you've got going. the quality and the consistency, then you're good to go. Well, obviously oh, yeah. you've got to be part of the program, but yes. <laughs> uh, John Stern says tool, tool changer when? When are we going to um, see a tool changer, if at all? Is there plans? Is there thoughts? There is a member in the team uh that is working on a tool changer but there are a lot of um challenges with that because <laughs> the space uh basically yeah. it was not designed with tool changer in mind but i had a couple of ideas how we could implement such a thing so instead of parking the tool head on the side of the printer or whatever i thought of a a, a system that would mount on top and the whole system would drop down so the tool head can be taken back and the system will go back up. So it's it's still on the drawing board. Uh, I know he started machining some parts, see, but I can't tell you more about it. It's still uh, a secret. Kind of a concept, lots of ideas going on and finding out what works. Yeah, yeah. So uh, not there yet. I don't know if it's going to be in the near future, but it's it's in the making. Is it going to happen? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we have a question about the preferred probing mechanism. Like for, um, I guess they mean for like bed mesh creation and stuff like that. How how are the, we probing the bed? Um, I 
Personally, I've been a big fan of no probe at all. Right. But I recently installed a Beacon probe from, um, well, Annex Engineering has been working with, with those guys at Beacon to make that uh, probe. And it's because I don't want to add any more weight on the print head. I want to keep it light. But that probe is super light. It's a little PCB that you add to your print head under. And uh, I would think that would be the best probe to go with the VZBot right now. It's uh, it's a fast probe. It can probe as it goes, and it's a constant scan, very high precision scanner. So I would I would say Beacon. Beacon would be the best thing. But there's a lot of uh, of mods you can do on the print head. You can add a inductive uh, probe. You could have a a a BL touch probe if you like. Um, I just uh, recommend the Beacon because it works super good and it's super light. Uh, has anyone, this is my question, has anyone done a clicky mod? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a clicky mod. Um, quick draw. Right, oh uh, yes, yeah, I, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, quick draw, there is a, a, well, all the STLs are there. We have a quick draw compatibility. So that is uh, that is another good system that is light. It just adds a bit more complexity because you have that docking system and you have, yeah. you know, I, I personally prefer the beacon. It stays on the print head. You don't have to worry about it. It's just quick and easy. Um, but yeah, many options. I don't think many I options. can get beacon in the UK yet. That was the, uh, <laughs> that was the reason for asking Clicky. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question for uh, the beacon team. Uh, I don't, th I think we're out of questions. I know one last one. CNC aluminium dock for Clicky. I I I doubt it. Um, <laughs> it it the the kit is already, I wouldn't say expensive, but it still is uh, a bit of money for for a printer. So if we add the more we add, the more CNC parts we add, more machining costs are adding and adding. So I I think we we found a good compromise with with everything. And for the price you pay, you get a awesome machine at least that's that's an, an opinion but i think you get a, a awesome machine yeah i think you're, you're definitely right in the fact that at the moment you're in a good range for being a premium diy machine if you start to make it too expensive you get into the realms of like like being so much more expensive than everything else that people start to question it but yeah i think right now it's in a really good really good price point uh am i planning on printing a sub five minute mini five minute benchy on this that <laughs> question man it keeps happening <laughs> benchy print benchy print benchy, benchy fast <laughs> we'll see what we do when we get to the end of the build we'll probably have some speed testing stuff just for funsies uh i don't know exactly what form that will take at the moment cool well i think that's going to be it for today then uh thank you so much simon for joining me that's been absolutely fantastic it's been thanks, a real big help walking me through all these parts you got in here yeah, thank you for the invitation. And if you have any questions, well, you got my number, you got my my contact. Feel free to uh, ask me or ask the team or ask the group and we'll be very, very happy to to help you through the build. Excellent. I can't wait to get started. So for anyone watching, it's going to be, the plan is to start this next Thursday. So the VZBot streams are going to be, fingers crossed, weekly at about this time, 3 p.m.-ish on a Thursday, at 3 or 3.30, depending on things. But around this time should be when we plan to continue. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to leave a like before you go. And you can check out vector3d.co.uk and the links in the description for stuff about VZBot and Mellow 3D. So, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Simon, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you, bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.